For this tutorial, we're only going to focus on the part of the process where you bring your character out of Vroid and into Flipside instead of the uh, actual creation of the character because that'll vary depending on your needs as a content creator. So to start things off, I'm going to take one of these templates here, just review it quickly and maybe tweak some settings. So maybe the eye distance I want to tweak, general body proportions maybe, character a little bit taller. And we'll essentially say that this is the character that I want to start creating with. Okay. So going over to the camera exporter, a couple things to keep in mind about characters that you want to bring into Flipside is that ultimately it is a VR application, and particularly for Quest, you want to try and avoid transparent materials, and also try to keep your polygon counts to uh, relatively manageable levels, but Flipside is ultimately a content creation tool, so we don't stop you from necessarily importing uh, meshes that don't meet our criteria. Only uh, if you're planning on sharing those characters does that become an issue. So really, uh, the main thing we look at is the export settings on a character, and then we can also look at uh, the edit cross-section and delete transparent meshes is also very important. And then generally we suggest raising your hair smoothness to two. And then we'll leave uh, these other settings sort of maxed out, but it's possible to decimate the, uh, the polygon counts on your character to make them more optimized so you can reduce the polygon counts. Even if this value is kind of high, it's actually 25,000 is relatively not too bad for uh, like a character you're going to be using for a vlog or some kind of content creation platform. One really important setting to change, though, is to change your material count to 2, as that's an easy win for, um, for optimization, because you only have two materials that have to be rendered per frame. And uh, for the atlas size, we'll leave that at 4K for now, because we can reduce that inside of Unity. And then I'm going to set the bone groups to 2 so that we only have like two bones per hair, assuming we're going to be deforming the, the hair at all. And uh, that's going to be a good place to start. So now I'm going to export a VRM character. You'll enter the necessary export information. Name, Thomas, author, Thomas. This will vary depending on your information. Let's use the avatar. I guess only I will be using this one. I'm not planning on sharing it or anything. Distribution prohibited. Say I'm waving the right copy, and then I will export the character. So I'm going to name them Thomas.brm. The name will vary. And now it's being exported. Takes a couple seconds. Okay. So to import your character, you're going to need two things. Well, three things, really. You're going to need a, a Unity project. 2019.2.11f1 is the version we're currently recommending people use, as well as Flipside Creator Tools installed, and uh, UniVRM, which is an additional asset bundle you can download off of uh, VRM's website. OK, so those are both installed already on this project. So what I can do to first get my character into my project is go under import under VRM0 and navigate to where I've saved that bundle, thomas.vrm. Going to open that and then I'm going to choose a location. Call that Thomas. Like so. And then hit save. The character is generated in your project. You might have to refresh. Okay, and here I am. So the main thing I want to focus on is this prefab object here, which if I actually drag it into the scene, is my essentially my avatar. What I need to do is to delete the main camera and directional light next, and I also want to clear out my lighting. And then I'm going to save this scene. Avatar dash one Thomas dot unity. And it's from the scene I'm going to create my character. So first thing first things first, I'm going to unpack this prefab and I'm going to rename it to match my scene name. 
like so. And now I'm going to go about stripping out the various VRM humanoid avatar scripts. But uh, I definitely want to keep this animator here. And I want to make sure that's set to apply root motion. So I'm just going to go through the process, stripping these all out. Okay, so now that those scripts are stripped out, the next thing I want to do is add an avatar model references script to my scene. And that always ha uh, is added at the very top. And I'm going to save there. Essentially, this is the script that's going to be the main way we control our character inside of Flipside. Also want to make sure that uh, this particular secondary object here, uh, this is all the additional scripts. We can actually just delete that. Save it. So we've got the body, face, skeleton, um, and we've got this main script here. Another important thing we're going to do is we're going to create an empty game object, and we're going to zero the transforms on that, and we're going to name this a very specific name and call it center i. Center i is really important because that's actually going to represent your personal view as you're using your avatar inside of Flipside. And I'm going to position that. Sorry, right. there. Zoom in. Right here, like so. So it lines up with my character's eyes. And you can adjust this to change the way your character is articulated during uh, while it's in flip side. But uh, again, this is a good place to start as far as the location. Now, what I need to do is I need to take where I position that center eye, so it's facing. Uh, in the correct direction, and I'm going to add that as a child of my head bone. So my head, like so. There it is. And now, what I can do is I can plug that into my center eye location, which uh, you can see there, center eye, it's asking for a transform. Click drag. There we go. So that's an important part of it. Going to change my character's name, Thomas, attribution, Vroid, or some other attribution like that. And uh, I also noticed I have eye bones on my character. I can actually manipulate those inside of Flipside. So I'm going to assign those with this here. Set it to two. Grab the left, then the right, like so. I want my character to use eye targets. And that's starting to really shape up. Uh, the next really important thing is I want to look at the facial setup for my character. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag the face asset, which if I actually inspect it, I can see I have this long list of blend shapes that as I move those around, I can actually manipulate the way my character's face moves and behaves. So essentially, once I've done that, I can click drag here to the additional message, meshes and then the animator section. I can use the animator here to actually manipulate my character. Then it's just a matter of plugging in which blend shapes are doing what. You can either use blend shapes or simplified blend shapes to control the face. Simplify it for if you just want a simple open and close mouth animation for your character. But we want the full blend shape set up for, uh, for this character. Then it's just a matter of going through the list of blend shapes that are available and crafting the face shapes that you want. Uh, I'm going to go through the process here, and then I'll skip ahead and go through the rest of the avatar setup after that. OK, now that I've filled out my full list of blend shapes, which as you can see, I've reused some of the shapes here. So so that my char when I speak, my character's uh, mouth will move as I speak, and when I use expressions, those will, layer, those will layer all together, as well as blink. Now I only have a few more steps before I can bring this character into flip side. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the avatar bend elbow limits 
so that my character has more reach. This is something you'll use if you have like a much wider set character or if you're noticing a lot of arm penetration. Uh, and then after that, I think that's essentially it. This is a dialogue here. You can put wrist twist bones if your character has them. Uh, V-Write doesn't have them by default, but in theory you could add those if you wanted to add an additional layer of control on your character. And uh, yeah, essentially that's the last major step as far as getting your character ready. You can save your scene. And uh, oh, one important thing too is to actually get your character to build as an asset bundle, you have to select your scene file and then add an asset bundle name. Avatar-1, Thomas. That should conclude it. So at this point, um, my character is essentially ready to be brought in and used as a character in Flipside. So I'll open my creator tools over here, or I have the tab open in this section over here. And all I have to do is hit build and publish, which I'm going to do now. This process will take some time while it uploads and builds the character. And here's my character in Flipside. This concludes importing a character from Vroid into Flipside. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and hope you have a nice day.